Well, good evening and welcome back to Rainbow Investing, where we examine a spectrum of ideas to build long-term wealth. Now today we're going to look at a very interesting topic that perplexes and vexes investors all around the world, and that is, does market timing actually work? You might have heard the phrase, it's a very common phrase in investing, time in the market beats timing the market. And it's always given out as a sort of piece of advice for people who try and, you know, basically time the market. People who try and buy into shares when they're low and sell when they're high. Of course, as we all know, it usually doesn't work out like that due to a combination of bad luck and human psychology. But let's actually wade into the weeds a bit here. So I found this piece from Charles Schwab called Does Market Timing Work? And it gives a really, really good explanation. So good, in fact, that I thought I would do a video on it. So it starts off by describing five different hypothetical investors. Each investor receives $2,000 at the beginning of every year for the 20 years ending in 2012. So that's presumably 1992 until 2012. So each of these investors is given $2,000 to invest in the market. And by the, time, by the market, they mean the S&P 500 index. The S&P 500, of course, is the largest index of American shares, and it holds 500 of the largest companies on US stock markets. So... Let's get started here. So we have five hypothetical investors here. Peter Perfect, Ashley Action, Matthew Monthly, Rosie Rotten, and Larry Linger. Very catchy names there. So each of these investors invests their $2,000 every year slightly differently. So it says here, Peter Perfect was a market, a perfect market timer. He had incredible skill or luck, more likely, and was able to place his $2,000 into the market every year at the lowest monthly close. For example, Peter had $2,000 to invest at the start of 1993. Rather than putting it immediately into the market, he waited and invested after month end January 1993. That is monthly low point for the S&P 500. At the beginning of 1994, Peter received another $2,000 and he invested in March 1994, the monthly low point for the market for that year. All right, you get the idea. So he kept doing that for every year for 20 years until 2012. So Ashley Action took a, simil, a simple, consistent approach. Each year, once she received her cash, she invested her $2,000 in the market at the early, earliest possible moment. Okay, so she just got her money and threw it in the market as soon as she got it, presumably in January. Um, Matthew Monthly divided his annual $2,000 into 12 equal portions, which he invested in at the beginning of each month. This strategy is known as dollar cost averaging. Okay, so instead of putting... The two thousand dollars in at the start of the year, he divided it and put what is that one hundred and sixty six seven dollars in every month. Yeah, so instead of a, a big lump sum, he just sort of dripped it into the market consistently every month. Rosie Rotten had incredibly poor timing or pe perhaps terribly bad luck. She invested her two thousand dollars at the market's peak. Okay, so the exact opposite of Peter Perfect. <laughs> So she invested at each each year's high point of the market instead of the low point, and yeah, two thousand a lump sum again. Yep. So that yeah, that explains that. Okay. And Larry Linger left his money in cash investments using treasury bills as a proxy every year and never got to around to investing in stocks at all. Okay. So Larry Linger just left his money completely in cash. Well, we already probably know that he's going to be the worst performer of the list, but let's keep going. Okay. So it shows us a graph as to how each person does. Now, so let's go and have a look at that first. Okay, so we have Peter Perfect, of course, coming out on top. That's probably a given. Um, this is Ashley, what was it? Ashley Action. So that was who put it in, put the lump sum in at, as soon as she got it. This is the dollar cost averaging one, Matthew Monthly. This is Rotten Rosie, and this is Larry Linger. Okay, so this is very interesting. As it points out here, naturally the best result belonged to Peter, who waited and timed his annual investment perfectly. Remember, this is just with an index fund. Um, so, he, so he turned, uh, what was it, $2,000 a year. So it's so the principal is $40,000, because it's $2,000 at the beginning of every year for 20 years. So uh, Perfect Peter turned his $40,000 into $87,000. But it, what it's saying here, the most, the study's most stunning, stunning findings concern Ashley, who came in second with eighty-one thousand dollars, only five thousand three hundred fifty-four dollars less than Peter Perfect. Right? Yeah, that's a very good point. So it, it's so what they're saying is that this person, um, P, 
Peter Perfect timed the market perfectly every single year, which is of course pretty much impossible. But Ashley Action, who just invested the $2,000 lump sum at the start of every year, as soon as she got it, did almost as well as Peter Perfect and did quite a bit better than Monthly Matthew, who employed the dollar cost averaging um, method. So yeah, it says here, Matthew's dollar cost averaging approach delivered solid returns, earning him third place for $79,510 at the end of 20 years. Yeah, so what they're saying is the market rises the right the market rises far more than it falls so it's saying here that a market rose 74 percent of the time over that 20 years so of course investing um in a in a in an ag- average sequential way captures most of that upside but it is interesting noting that a l- just putting in a lump sum every year rather than dollar cost averaging actually got you out in front so of course Rotten Rosie did pretty poorly because she picked the worst possible time every year to deploy her two thousand dollars. But you can see it's it's still like not that much different from the dollar cost averaging. And of course the worst performer is Larry Linger, who's turned his forty thousand dollars into fifty one thousand dollars, and that's just from um, interest in a bank account, basically or a treasury bill. I think they said. Yes, as it says here, Ro- Rosie Rotten's results also proved surprisingly encouraging. While her poor timing left her $9,163 short of Ashley, who didn't try timing investments at all, uh, Rosie still earned nearly 50% more than what she would have if she hadn't invested in the market at all. So that's the point of this, guys. Like, if, like even if you're a terrible, terrible investor with, you know, this is speaking with index funds only, you're still going to, over a, a long period of time, make a lot more money than if you just have your money in cash. This is quite pertinent. So a lot of people are very anxious about, you know, putting their money in in the wrong time. Like, what if what if the market crashes tomorrow and I lose half my money? But this highlights the futility of that line of thinking because he said the biggest worry is investing in a market high. Ironically, had he done that each year, like Rotten Rosie did, he would have been a lot better off, like more than 50% better off over a 20-year period. Another thing to note here, guys, is that it says, regardless of the time period considered, the ranks turned out to be remarkably similar. We analysed all 68 rolling 20-year periods dating back to 1926, which of course includes the Great Depression and the stock market crash of 1929. In 58 out of the six, 68 periods, the rankings were exactly the same. So that, like, Peter Perfect always comes first, naturally, but Ashley Action second, Matthew Monthly third, Rosie Rotten fourth, and Larry Linger last. Yeah, so it's saying that even here, um, even in those 10 scenarios where it wasn't the same, it was almost the same most of the time. So there you go, guys. It's a very interesting insight. So we just have to keep this thing in mind that the time in the market does beat time in the market. I know it's a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. And here you can see why. Just cut across here just to put this in perspective somewhat. So here we have the S&P 500 from Yahoo Finance. So this is obviously a one day graph of the S&P 500. Obviously, when you, like when, when all of us human investors look at this, we think, okay, I want to buy here and sell here, sell here. But you know, this is for one day. You know, if we zoom out, things start getting in perspective, you know? It doesn't really matter what you do on each day as long as you keep doing it for a long period of time. That's the way you make money in investing. Because once you start zooming out, you just get a better perspective of these things. Because the market always goes up in the long run. Yes, it has big periods where it falls and takes a while to recover. But you know, you, we can't. No one can predict when that's going to happen. So it's it's very silly, in my opinion, to try and you know time that or anything like that. I mean, look at this. I mean, you know, if you're back here thinking, you know, is this a good, good time or is this a good time? It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. These things just go keep going up in the long run. And time in the market does beat timing the market. If you invested at any point in the last ten years, chances are you'd be up right now. And that includes here a peak, that includes here a trough, that includes here a peak, here a peak. I mean, that was, that was COVID, guys, and look at what's happened. It's all about perspective. And so that's why I think this article, I'll give them full credit from Charles Schwab by Mark W. Reap, is, a, is an extremely, extremely helpful article, and it's something that we should all keep in mind in our investing. We humans love to focus on the small stuff. Sometimes it's just not that relevant, even though our brain is telling us it is. You kind of want to stay in these three, but really, you know, the last thing you want to do is be a Larry Linger. That's all. That's what I'll leave the video on. 
Thank you so much for watching guys. I really appreciate it. If you like this video or found it useful, make sure you leave a like on it. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as part of our family. I'll be back with some more videos soon, but for now, good night.